I'd like to cover a topic we hear a lot about, interest rates, but specifically how interest rates move. See, it all starts with securitization. That's where we take a bunch of individual mortgages and put them together into a giant pool of mortgage loans. That pool of mortgage loans is further segmented down into mortgage bonds, which themselves are classified based upon their risk profile, from AAA rated bonds, lowest risk bonds, to unrated or junk bonds, bonds of the highest risk. Now, mortgage-backed securities are traded every day just like stocks. And like stocks, mortgage-backed securities are very volatile, which means that they move up and down throughout the day and from day to day. Now, the price of these bonds and the mortgage rates that are tied with them move a lot like a teeter-totter, meaning that when one goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. To monitor these price movements, we use charts that look a lot like this one, called a candlestick chart. This chart was provided by Mortgage Market Guide, the industry leader in tracking mortgage bonds. Interestingly enough, Mortgage Market Guide was also the first company to bring candlestick charting to the lending industry. Now, we use these charts to predict and look for patterns in bond price movements. And these patterns have all kinds of different names, like downward breakout and double bottom and inverted hammer. But we'll make it simple for you. Green is good and red is bad. Anytime you see green on this chart, it's good. It means bond prices are going up and mortgage rates are coming down. Conversely, when you see red, it's bad. It means that bond prices are dropping and mortgage rates are going up. The point here is that bond prices change. Mortgage rates just follow those prices. So what can we monitor to stay in front of these price changes? That leads us to a big debate in the lending industry, the debate between the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities. Now, depending upon what you read and depending upon where you look, people will say the 10-year treasury is the preferred index for monitoring where mortgage rates are headed into the future. But we find that flawed because there is a huge difference between the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities. In fact, there are three big differences. There are differences in maturity, risk, and correlation between the two. And what we found is the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities oftentimes diverge, meaning that when one is going up, the other index, more often than not, is going down. Think of it this way. If you want to know the price of one share of Microsoft stock, you don't look at Apple. Now granted, they're both computer companies. They'll both give you a great idea of where the technology sector is headed. But if you want to know the specific price of a specific stock, you have to watch that stock. The same holds true with regards to the 10-year treasury and mortgage-backed securities. If you want to know where mortgage rates are headed, you have to monitor data on mortgage-backed securities. Having said that, we tell loan officers to focus on mortgage-backed security data, but also watch the 10-year treasury and the economy as a whole. What we say is loan officers have to have a 360-degree view of the market. The reason we say this is because mortgage-backed securities are competing with other instruments for the same investment dollar. By that, we mean that the economy as a whole has an impact on the prices of mortgage bonds. Depending upon what employment is doing, or gas prices, or inflation, or the stock market, all of these things have an impact on the price of mortgage bonds, and therefore mortgage rates. The one thing we should really try to avoid is the media. The reason for that is because the media is behind it best. This is another Mortgage Market Guide candlestick chart, and what we're illustrating here is that articles released via media outlets, such as CNN Money, are oftentimes behind the curve. When rates are improving, you'll see an article stating mortgage applications are down on higher interest rates. The reverse is also true. When rates are climbing, you'll read a bunch of articles saying rates have dropped dramatically. The take-home point here is that the last thing we should be monitoring for data on mortgage rates is the media. To switch gears, let's look at what the Federal Reserve is doing to keep mortgage rates low, specifically the Fed's Mortgage Bond Purchase Program, and why the Fed nowadays is acting an awful lot like a diamond company. But first, a quick background on the program. With hopes of resuscitating the housing market, the Federal Reserve promised to purchase $1.25 trillion of mortgage bonds through the first quarter of 2010. They hoped, at the time, that the purchasing of these bonds would lower mortgage rates and give life to the housing market. But more on that later. Now, everybody knows that diamonds are expensive, but why? To answer that, we'll have to go back to Economics 101 because it's all about supply and demand. When the supply of an item is low, demand grows. A byproduct of that increased demand is an increase to the price. So whenever you see high demand, you typically see high prices as well. 
The diamond companies know this and keep supply levels low, thereby increasing demand for diamonds. With that increased demand comes higher diamond prices. So the diamond companies are artificially keeping diamond prices high. The Federal Reserve is working in much the same way. The Fed is creating the market for mortgage-backed securities, keeping demand high. Now with the high demand, the prices of those mortgage-backed securities goes up. And what happens when the price goes up? That's right, rates drop. So we know how it works. The question of will it work is pretty easy to answer. It has worked. In fact, it's worked beautifully. The reason why mortgage rates are currently so low is because of the Fed's involvement in buying these mortgage bonds. So we know how it works. We know that it has worked over the past year. The real question then becomes, how will it end? The Fed's purchase program was supposed to end in December 2009, but the Fed stretched it through the first quarter of this year. One problem, they didn't change the amount of money they plan to spend. So they're spending the same amount of money over a longer period of time which means that we, what we expect to see is rates gradually rising throughout the first quarter of 2010. Now, this gradual increase in rates leaves loan officers in a bit of a pickle trying to manage an onslaught of new business, their clients trying to cash in on low rates before the climb upwards. Underwriters will also be backlogged with clients trying to close their loan before the Fed stops their involvement. So what should you, the client, do? First and foremost, be proactive. Meet with your loan professional today to schedule a consultation. Act now before mortgage rates start to move upwards. Have any questions? Be sure to contact the mortgage professional who sent you this video. They'd be happy to help you out.